Hey guys, can you hear me? Hello, how are you? I'm Lenny Frichetti. I'm head of casting at Mike Lemon Casting, and I am here today to talk to you about how to nail your self tape, um, which is super important because, as we all know, things have changed. <laughs> and um, you know, as far as casting goes, we're going to really be relying on self tapes now more than ever. So it's important for you guys to know what um, we expect and what makes a really great self tape. So um, without further ado, I am going to go into um, a couple different aspects that I think are important for you. Um, first of all, we're going to go over like what makes a good solid self tape. Um, so we'll talk about the kind of the technical aspect of it and then get into the performance of it. Um, and so from there, I'm going to give you some tips on how to make it really great. So you'll stand out among everybody else that's self-submitting. And then after all that, we'll get into some of the questions that you have. Um, so I'm so glad to see everybody tuning in and I really hope this is helpful for you. Um, so we'll start off with just kind of the technical aspect of things. Um, so really what we're asking of you in a self-tape, you know, if you think about it, is being a filmmaker. Um, and for those of you that aren't filmmakers, um, it's just, you know, we'll go over some of the basics because we don't want the technical part of the self-tape to take away from your performance. For example, lighting. Um, I look at a lot of self-tapes and lighting is key. You wouldn't believe how many self-tapes I get in with somebody like in a dark corner and it's like, you know, saying the copy and I can't even see their face. Um, so you're going to want to set up a part of your apartment or house um, that is for self-tapes and you just leave it there, you know, everything's set up for you and that's where you go to self-tape. Um, you know, ideally it's quiet. It's a place where you don't get any interruptions um, and you can really just focus on your work, but you want it technically to be all set up for you so you don't have to worry about it. So first of all, we need to see you, right? So lighting is important. Um, for those of you who aren't filmmakers, um, you're going to want like a three point lighting system. If you have it, if you don't have it, don't stress out. Uh, but if you do have lights um, on hand, then you're going to want a light you know, to basically light up this side of your face, a light to light up this side of your face and a light above you. So that's like the professional setup. If you can't do that, don't worry. Um, there's also a thing, and you probably already know this, but um, called a ring light, which is what I'm using actually, um, which goes around the camera. The camera sits in the middle of it and it's just a really nice light for your face. And that's really what we need to see in a self tape. We just need to see your face. So if you don't have any of those things, you can certainly make do with, you know, nice lamp, bright lamps that you can put in those positions, or you can also, um, you know, stand by a nice window with nice light that comes in, but you want to, we want to see your face, uh, you know, duh. Um, the next thing of course is the camera. Um, so I get all types of self submissions in, um, and it seems to me most people use the camera on their computer which is convenient, right? Um, but you wanna make sure that it's not um, kind of a wide angle lens on your computer because it'll distort your face. And obviously we don't want that, right? So um, so make sure, you know, look at your clip before you send it and make sure that it's not distorting your face or your body. Um, of course, a lot of people use um, their smartphones, which is totally fine, they do great, a great job. Um, but you want to watch your framing, you know, you don't want there to be tons of headroom, you know, if I duck down, you know, there's a lot of people have their face right here. And there's headroom, like, you know, half the thing is headroom. So just make sure that you know, you're, it's a medium shot, you probably don't even have to do as wide as I am. But a medium shot from your chest up to your head is really what we need to see. If they you know, if you read the instruction on a self tape and they need a bigger, you know, a longer shot of you, then you can certainly do a slate separate than your actual tape where you do a full body shot and they can see, you know, um, you know, your body. Um, so the best cameras though, that I think for self tapes are, um, handheld where you would put it on a tripod and you would set, you know, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, and 
those, you know, do some really nice quality. It doesn't have to be 4K, obviously, but um, those I think are the best self tapes that I get in. Um, next up would be sound. Sound is another huge thing. Um, so lights and sound. I will get self tapes in with people that do these like amazing performances and I can't hear them. And it's just, it's terrible <laughs> because I know it was really good, but I just can't hear it. And so we go around, you know, the office trying to like find a computer with really good sound on it. Um, but ultimately, you know, those don't get passed on to the client because we can't hear you. Um, so make sure you have good sound and then you don't have to have a mic, um, you know, like this one, you can certainly use your camera mic. Um, but you want to make sure that if that's what you're using, the camera's not far away on the other side of the room, right? Because then we certainly won't be able to hear you very well because the mic is on the, on the camera. So, um, you know, certainly play back your clip before you send it in, make sure that we can hear you. Um, and you know, that, that would be actually ideal. Okay. Um, background. So, <laughs> and I've got some funny stuff, you know, that I I've gotten in with a crazy background. People will tape in front of like crazy wallpaper or paintings. And I'm sure we all know of that CNN clip of the guy that was interviewed and his kids come like skidding in. And then the wife comes like, you know, on the floor trying to grab them out of the shot. And obviously that's distracting. So, you know, ideally you don't want anything to distract from your performance. Um, so, and that also goes along with having a reader. You don't want your reader on camera with you. You just want to be the focal point. Um, if you have anybody else, any animal, anything else in there, we're going to look at them. That's just what we do. Um, so don't have anything that distracts from your performance. Um, wardrobe. This is a good one. Uh, you want to wear something that is um, representative of whatever role you're going out for. Obviously, if it's a doctor, you know, and you have a lab coat, that's awesome. You throw it on. Um if you, if you don't have stuff, that's okay. I would say the go-to is like business casual. So like a nice casual, you know, collared shirt or something, something nice and pressed and something, um, that looks clean, looks neat, is presentable as if you're going on like a job interview. Um, I'll get tapes in from people in like torn sweatshirts and stuff. And, you know, if it doesn't fit the role, then it's a little distracting. So again, it's all about you being the focal point. Um, oh, one other technical issue that I'll get as well is clips will come in and they'll be super, but there'll be like no name on the tape. So I won't know, I won't know who it is, you know, there, there, um, you know, won't be a file name. So I say, put your name in the file name. So I know for sure, like who it is. Um, the worst thing would be for you to do an amazing performance and for us to not know who you are. That would be terrible. So please uh, make sure the file name has your name. And again, if there are instructions on the particular self-submission you're doing, certainly follow those. But if there aren't, I would say just as a normal practice, put your first and last name um, in the clip name. Um, okay, performance. So um, here are a couple basic things that make a really good performance. Um, so first off, um, for commercials, I say look on camera um, for you know self submissions for a commercial, and for film and TV, I say look slightly off camera. If you have a reader that can help you with this, awesome. If it's a scene, they would stand slightly off camera, and your eye line would be to them but certainly no profiles because uh, we want to see your face again. <laughs> um, a lot of this is just common sense, right? Um, but you'd be surprised how many people don't do these things. Um, try to memorize your lines for self-submissions. Um, you know, we do expect a lot out of you for self-submissions, believe it or not, could because in our minds we're thinking, oh, they've had time to work on it and practice it. Um, so, you know, take the time and try to be off book if you can. If you need to hold it, you know, just to glance at it, that's okay. But again, we want to be engaged with you. So, you know, eye contact to camera is key or like slightly off camera because we want to we want to be part of what you're doing. Um Analyze the scene. And I'm sure you guys are taking acting classes and, you know, um, have different techniques that you're using. Uh, but certainly I think the basics are 
knowing who you are, um, knowing who you're talking to, you know, who are you talking to in the scene? Um, and what is your motivation? I bet you've heard that before, right? Uh, what do you want out of the scene? And that is what you're going to go after. Um, so making sure you do at least those three things um, <laughs> will, will give you a great start. It'll be a really solid performance. Um, also, please, please work on it beforehand and don't have your first read through be the self-submission you submit in to me or to anyone. Um, you're going to want it to be excellent, right? You want to do your best. So tape a couple and send maybe your last one in, you know, but don't, don't read it like through first and tape it and then send it in because, you know, I don't think it's going to show you to in your best light. So how do you make it super great? All right, here's some tips that I like to see when I get really good tapes in. Um, so if you are self-taping for a TV show or a, um, a film by a director that you know, certainly watch the shows, watch the films that they've done. Um, if it's for a commercial, watch that brand, you know, watch uh, commercials that are already out there. That way you get a sense of the world that you're auditioning for because um, you need to fit into that world. Your performance needs to fit into that world, right? So um, if you're auditioning for a drama, you're probably not going to want to go with a crazy uh, comedy take on the material. You're going to want to fit into whatever world you're, you're taping for. Um, so do your research ahead of time. Um, it's kind of your homework as an actor, if you can. So you know the world that you're stepping into. And then when you start analyzing the script, um, you want to make sure that the choices that you're making kind of reflect the world that you're going into. Um, again, you know, you don't want to do um, a crazy wild take on a character if you know that that character wouldn't exist in like House of Cards, right? Um, or, uh, you know, a sitcom. Maybe you do a dramatic take for a sick time and you know, that's not going to work out. You know, that doesn't really, um, those don't fit together well. So make sure you fit into the world you're auditioning for. Um, also, um, you're going to want to um, make interesting choices. And again, that's super important. Um, not only, let's say I, I use an example as a doctor, like say you get a scene and, and this was a self tape that came into me actually. Um, the scene was really basic. It was just a doctor and a, um, a patient and it was for an existing TV show and the doctor walks in and he's got results. He or she has results um, to deliver. And we actually never even hear what the results are. Um, and that was the scene. It was like three lines. Um, and it seemed like a pretty easy scene on the get go, but there was actually really, I think much deeper than that. So instead of just playing a doctor, challenge yourself and ask yourself, well, what kind of doctor am I? And it may not even be given in the scene, but if you go, okay, well, what if I, instead of my just a general practitioner and, you know, I'm walking into the scene to give, um, you know, results on his thyroid, um, Let's amplify that a little bit. Maybe you're a cardiologist and maybe you're delivering results on an echocardiogram. Maybe this patient needs a pacemaker. And so you're making all of these really cool choices about the scene that we're never going to hear. We're not going to hear the results, right? But you're personalizing it and you're making these really cool choices ahead of time. So that's going to push your motivation in the scene and that's going to make it so much more interesting. Um, and that's what it's all about, making interesting, strong choices um, that, you know, they may be completely different than the choices that um, ideally we're looking for. But what's cool is you stand out as making interesting choices that we hang on to and we want to see more of you. And that's what you want, right? Um, for example, a lot of TV shows will audition you or have you self-tape numerous times, right, for different roles all over the place. But that's a great sign because they like what they see and they want to see more of you. So when you're self-taping, realize, you know, you may not only be self-taping for that particular role, but for many roles on that show because, 
you know, they're casting week after week after week, new characters that you could possibly fit into. And you want to make sure that, you know, we remember you and we will, if you make really cool, amazing choices. Um, and we see that you're working on something, you know, it's always about working on something, right? I know you've heard that before too. Um, okay. Personalize things. Um, so another thing that kind of, you know, makes um, a little sizzle on your um, self-submission is if you personalize either like who you're talking to or maybe what you're talking about um, or um, who you are, you know, maybe it's um, or even where you are, the location in the scene that you are. Um, I trained at Lee Strasberg. Um, Institute in New York. And so I pull from method stuff. I, I never, I didn't really act. I uh, went into casting instead, but um, so, you know, I, I kind of pull from that reference because I know it well. Um, so when you make what's called substitutions, um, you know, where you personalize, like say I'm talking to um, this patient and maybe in my life, there's someone that's similar to this patient and I would personalize that. So that's an example. And certainly there are many techniques to do this. Um, you don't have to use method acting, um, but it's, you know, it, I've seen it work and I think it's, it's really awesome. Um, but you want to personalize the scene because it's got to be real for you. And if it's real for you, then it's real for us. And, um, you know, again, it makes it interesting to watch. And you may not get that role, but we'll certainly keep you in mind for more stuff. Trust me. And, you know, another thing and just kind of a caveat here for casting. Um, so like I said, I see a bunch of tapes, but I am usually casting just, you know, um, normally about 20 things, you know, always ongoing, like 20 projects. Um, so if you're coming in self-taping for one project and maybe you're not a good fit for that, but if you're interesting and I'm like, wow, you know, they're really making some cool choices and they're confident and there's just something about this person. I'm definitely going to keep you in mind for other projects that I'm doing. So self-tapes are super important. Um, it's your chance to, to make an impression and to stand out so that we go, oh, wow, you know, we got to keep this person around and we'll usually keep your tape somewhere so we can reference it, you know, later. So just kind of a, a note on that. Um, one more last thing I want to say about making self-tapes great is um, the before and after of a scene. Um, you know, make a decision make a choice on where you're coming from. Like, let's take that doctor scene again, you know, make the choice on, you know, where are you coming from as the doctor? Are you coming from a surgery? Are you coming from, you know, talking with your kid? Did you just have lunch? You know, um, where are you coming from? And in this particular scene, they entered. So, you know, come with that as you cross from that world into the one that you're just about to do. So, you know, again, you're personalizing that moment, but make that decision. And then um, so that's called the pre-beat. And then certainly make the decision on where you're going afterwards. And that kind of ties into your motivation. Like say, for instance, the patient needs um, a pacemaker, you know, and you're the cardiologist. And so you need to, um, you know, get it through that this person needs to sign the paperwork. You need to get them to surgery today, you know, or, you know, otherwise they could just fall over or whatever, but you, that's your goal, you know, and, um, that's where you're going with the scene. And after the scene, you're visualizing, okay, we're going into pre-op or getting them prepped, you know, for surgery. So, or maybe you, you know, maybe it's not that urgent and they're going to do it next week and you can go to your golf game. <laughs> so, you know, but make the decision of before and after, um, because I think, especially if you're entering or leaving a scene, um, I think that makes a big difference too. And it makes it again, interesting to watch. Um, Oh, one other thing is certainly make sure you follow all the instructions on a self-submission. You know, I give you all these kind of cool things to try, but certainly follow the instructions to make sure, um, you know, you're doing what they want you to do, that your file is in the right format, you know, all the little technical things. Um, because if it doesn't, if it, it's too big, if we can't download, if there's any kind of like, like I said, that you're, we can't find your name anywhere, you know, we can't send you on to the end client. And 
I have to tell you, you know, I have clients that will get self submissions in and um, they'll see somebody really good and they'll lament to me on the phone. They'll be like, we can't send them in because, you know, the tape was, you know, we couldn't see them or hear them or whatever. So certainly it's, it's a big deal, you know, to make sure technically you've covered all of that. And so when you send something in, it really is your best foot forward. Um, so I think that is all that I, well, I'm probably going to think of something else, but anyway, but all of that stuff, if you combine it, will make it really great. And I really want you to book the roles. Cool. Um, so I guess we'll open it up to some questions if you have anything. Um, and I'm going to look down on this feed here. I really appreciate you guys, uh, tuning in. Let's see. Um, okay. Nobody read lines opposite. Can a recording work? Good. That's a good one. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, you can certainly record the lines that you're reading, you know, that for the other person, instead of having a reader there to read against yourself, um, if you don't have somebody to read with you, ideally, yes, have a reader, have them, you know, controlling the camera um, and reading the lines with you. That takes like a huge onus off of you. Um, but if you if you can't and it's all by yourself, then absolutely you can record the lines. I think that's probably better than, um, you know, not recording the lines that you're working opposite with. I think it gives you something to, to work on. So those are great questions. Um, how do I slate? Sure. Um, again, you know, check these submission instructions on each job you submit for. Um, they all differ, but certainly include, you know, your name. Um, make sure, a note there, make sure you say your name slowly. A lot of people, you know, we'll just breeze right through it and we won't understand them. And I realize you say your name a lot. Um, so, you know, I'm sure it, it just comes off your tongue super quick, but slow it down a little bit and have fun with it. I think slates are good too, because um, we get a sense of your personality. Um, because we don't bring you into the room for an audition, you know, it gives us another glimpse of you. And um, we want to, we want to see, you know, who you are and, and what you're like. And I think a slate is a good opportunity to do that. So your name, um, if it's, you know, a nationwide casting, you'll want to include your location. And, um, you know, certainly if it's um, union or non-union, or if they're accepting both submissions, you'll want to, you'll want to say your union status and an agent too, if you work through an agency. Um, and you can also put this on a title card before your self-submission. Um, but I wouldn't, you know, I, I would only do that. I wouldn't, you know, cut together a whole film <laughs> and I've had people do that, which is really cool and amazing. Um, but it's a lot of work and really we're just looking for your performance. Um, so you don't have to cut together and, you know, edit like fancy with music and everything. Um, people do that, but you don't have to do that, please. We actually want to see a raw performance. Um, so we know what we're working with and not what ended up on the cutting room floor. I hope that helps. Um, uh, okay. Um, uh, what, what should talent, do versus what agents should do. So um, uh, an agent, okay, so I'll reach out to agents as well as, um, you know, freelancers for self-submissions. So if you work through an agent, then you're certainly going to want to submit through that agent. And then the agent will send to us. Um, it's a little different. Um, you know, every, every place is different, but, um, you know, you'll want to include them somehow in your submission, either it's, you send to them and they send me all the tapes, which is kind of how I usually work. Um, or you'll want to put the name of your agency in, you know, the, the title of the clip. Um, I think that's very helpful too. Um, but you know, you'll, you're, you're going to want to include them somehow. So it's not just a direct submission. Um, and for freelancers that work direct, um, you know, you can certainly just send it in directly. Um, okay. What specifically do you look for in a video audition acting wise? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, <laughs> so that's the most important thing, right? Acting, um, you know, and all of the stuff kind of, you know, leads to support your performance. So I looked for honesty. I look for a sense of, you know, being natural, being real. Um, you know, 
I would say, you know, man, 80% of my jobs that I get in, you know, we're really looking for you or a version of you, you know, so you don't have to play the elephant man or, um, you know, some, you know, extreme character. I mean, a lot of the stuff I get are, you know, real people, you know, and we want to see that honesty, that approach um, where kind of less is more even, you know, um, you know, I don't do theater. Well, I did in the past, but I don't, I don't cast theater. Um, so I'm looking for stuff on camera that's real. And, um, and I think an honesty about your acting is key for me. Um, and also a confidence, you know, I want to know that, if I give you a redirect that you'll be able to take it, you know, if you get to set and all of a sudden things change on you and, you know, we're headed in a completely different direction that you'll be able to switch. And, you know, that's the one thing that I think is missing in self submissions, unfortunately, just the nature of it. Um, in auditions, we get to do that. We get to give you a redirect. Um, so, you know, I think, just being able to kind of flip on a dime um, is key. Um, yeah, but I'd say honesty is probably my top, my top one. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, do you pick talent from open calls? And if so, what platform do you post it on? I do pick talent from open calls. In fact, I love finding talent. That's one of my favorite things. Um, so we are not having open calls right now. Um, just, you know, obviously trying to keep everybody safe, but we're doing virtual open calls. Um, and uh, I do find people from open calls. In fact, I found hmm, uh, a couple of leads for films that way. I've seen people in open calls and I'm like, wow, you know, they're amazing. And I'll keep them in a separate file. And, uh, you know, I'll keep a list of them running of people that have really impressed me. And uh, they've ended up getting cast in some movies I've done. Uh, when was a lead? So... I think open calls are awesome and I'm kind of old school that way. I love finding people and finding really great talent. So, um, you know, I think kind of for open call purposes, having a monologue, um, that you can nail is key. Um, you know, I know a lot of auditions are just about copy or sides, uh, or script that's given to you, but for open calls, you know, we do look at monologues and so it's worth having a really good monologue. So, um, yes, I do cast people from open calls for sure. How do you apply for an open call? Um, for us, we have, um, we, well, we have them every month. Now they're starting virtually. Um, but they are, um, at Michael Lemon's website. You can see when the next date's going to be. And that date is when we'll have submissions by. So you can do a self tape, um, of your monologue for that. And the instructions, um, are at michaelmancasting.com for how to do that. Um, there are certainly other open calls going on right now. I know, um, you know, lots of folks are kind of looking to ramp up those to get a, a good, you know, um, database of people. So when things get going again, we'll have some resources, you know, ready to go. So, um, you know, go to open calls. It's totally worth it. It is totally worth it. Um, do you accept headshots and resumes? Absolutely. Um, in fact, I think a headshot is um, one of the things I would totally invest in. Um, it's your calling card. So having a great headshot is so key. And, you know, I would say I kind of, I feel like I do a lot of fast food casting um, where clients will come to me and like, Melanie, we need, you know, X, Y, Z. And I'll send them some pro profiles of people that, that fit. And they'll actually just select based on your headshot and my reference. So um, these are not like, they'll be speaking roles for sure, but maybe not, you know, a lead in a film where we will have a series of, you know, self-tapes, auditions, that sort of thing. Um, but headshots are super important, guys, and they can totally open the door for you. So make sure um, the headshot, you know, uh, is representative of who you are. Um, are business cards okay too? Uh, business cards are okay. Um, I think... Um, you know, a headshot is probably ideal. Um, if you only have a business card, uh, I might, we might lose it, you know, um, headshots and I'm kind of old school that way for auditions and open calls. You know, I like to have a physical headshot to look at. Um, it kind of gets lost on the email, you know, um, 
So we have a database that we use um, where people have profiles and such in there, which is great. Um, every casting director uses a different platform or a different system. Um, so, but you're going to want, you know, a headshot. And I think business cards are okay to hand out, but, you know, just realize we could lose them. And, you know, you won't get, you know, your resume on the back, which I, I you know, gravitate towards. Um, okay. Yep. Should we put a resume behind the headshot? Absolutely. Please do. And I would do old school protocol and put uh, staple it in the four corners because we don't want it to fall off the headshot. Um, if it falls off the headshot and there's no name on the headshot, then we have no idea who you are. Um, so, you know, certainly staple it. Um, don't paper clip it or binder clip it because that will certainly get separated along the way. And why? Well, um, so it happens. So you come to an audition. Well, hopefully we'll get back to auditioning, right? Um, so you would come to an audition with a, a headshot and resume and I'll have a client in session. So they actually take your headshot and resume and they'll select their top picks and then they'll take it back to either the ad agency or the end client and, um, and you know, they'll actually physically take your headshots with them. So um, always have headshots, you know, on your person, in your car, in your bag, ready to go. Um, I know everybody has digital versions, but like I said, we get so many emails, they get lost. Um, so you'll want a digital copy, but you know, certainly have them on hand too. Um, I think it's very important. Um, what if you don't have a resume yet? I, I understand, I know. Um, don't worry. Um, you'll get one, I'm sure. Uh, if you're listening to this, you're already on, on the way. Um, so what do you do, right? Um, how do you even start with a resume? Well, start with training. I think training is big, a big deal for me, at least. You know, I mentioned I trained at Lee Strasberg. So um, I, you know, have a lot of uh, respect for people that are out there training and honing your craft. And I look at where you study actually to know kind of what techniques you're using. So I think that's a big deal. It shows me that you're investing in your career and, um, you know, you're motivated, you're serious, you um, take responsibility um, for your career, which is cool. And, um, you know, as soon as that happens, you start creating a network uh, of people, of other actor friends who, you know, you'll hear about jobs and, you know, and it kind of grows that way. Um, but I would definitely start with training and, um, you know, and then maybe start looking for student films, um, you know, maybe doing non-speaking roles, even extra work just to kind of get your foot in the door and start making contacts. Um, and once you, you know, if you're headed to speaking roles, you're going to want to kind of shift off of the non-speaking, you know, the um, extra roles and start getting that off the resume so you can start filling in principal roles. And that's ultimately where you're headed. Um, so, you know, I, I uh, look for people that start with the training and theater too. Um, I think theater is a a really big deal. Um, again, it shows responsibility. It shows that, you know, you dedicate months of your life for this, you know, for this show. And that's, that's a big deal. We want to see that because, you know, this is our day job. So, you know, we'd like it to be your day job too. Anyway, um, is it better to be union or non-union? That's a good question. Um, in Philadelphia, where, um, you know, I cast, um, it has turned into a non-union market. Um, so we do a ton of non-union stuff. We do some union work too, for sure. Um, but it's, you know, kind of tides have shifted and, um, I noticed there's way more non-union work down here than ever before. So I think it's best for you as an actor to get work, right? Um, and that depends on what market you're in. If you're not in one of the bigger markets, and even if you are, um, and you're just starting, you're going to want to stay non-union to really grow your resume because you want, you know, you want a nice, um, solid resume going for you full of work, whether it's, you know, independent films, um, you know, commercials, um, PSAs, industrials, voiceovers, whatever you can do. You want a solid resume, I think, before you jump into the union pool, which is um, very super competitive and you're going to want to be able to stand on your own two feet. So, um, you know, I think 
it's worth you as an actor to get work um, now by doing non-union stuff if you're non-union um, before you jump into the union pool. Um, it's kind of, I, I feel like it's a natural growth process. Um, and then when you're union, you know, then you can stand on your own two feet. Um, but if you're just getting started, I would stay non-union um, until you can grow. Let's see. Um, yay. Hi, Lisa. How you doing? Good to see you. Um, okay. How do you become a young actress or actor in, if your parents don't like this idea? Oh, can I relate to that? <laughs> um, my parents were not into me uh, being an actor when I, um, I got into New York University and, um, and that's where I trained at Strasburg. And, you know, it took a while for them to really um, sit well with the idea that this is what I wanted to do with my life. So, you know, it's 20 some years later and I'm still doing it. I'm still in the business. So I obviously love it. Um, I think, you know, if you love something, if this is your dream and, you know, there's nothing else in the world that satisfies you like acting, then go for it. Um, you got to give yourself a chance to go for it. Uh, I get a ton of people in at open calls that are now like empty nesters and they've, you know, they've like grown and done day jobs and whatever. And they still end up in my office, you know, now at 60 or whatever, and they never were able to do what they really love to do. So, you know, if it's, if that means that much to you, then stick with it and you're going to find a way to do it. And it may not be, you know, going to school for it. Maybe it's doing community theater right now. You know, maybe it's doing a YouTube, uh, yeah, YouTube, a YouTube um, channel for yourself, you will find a way to do it. And I say you got to follow your heart because that's what it's all about. You know, follow what makes you happy. Life is short, you know, God bless. And so you need to, you know, make sure that um, you stay happy. Um, even if you have a day job that you need to pay the bills, um, you know, then do it at night. You'll find a way to work it in. And so, you know, um, stay true to your heart. It's important. Okay. Um, yes, you need a resume. Let's see if any other questions going on here. Um, hi. <laughs> hi, guys. So glad you're all here. It's great. Uh, let's see. What do you think about feature extra roles in major blockbuster feature films? Whoop, this is going so bad. Do you see that as valuable experience for new actors? Um, yes, I think extra work is super valuable experience, actually. Um, for again, for those of you that are just getting started, um, getting an extra job is awesome because you learn um, how filmmaking works and you kind of see where you as an actor fit into that. And it's an incredible process. I mean, there are so many people that come together to make this amazing project. And, um, you know, being an extra, you're, you're kind of a fly on the wall and you get to see how it all works together. So that's really important to know your place. Um, and then it's also a super networking, act, you know, event. So you can make friends, you can kind of get your foot in the door. Um, and you can also use it to your advantage. So, um, you know, I cast extras too. And um, nothing makes me happier when I hear from an AD on set that the extras were awesome and that they were there on time. They were super professional. You know, they, you know, just rose up to whatever the day presented. Um, because that tells me that you guys are in it to win it you know, um, and the ADs see those people, the people that are really there and, you know, um, are there to help them make their day easier, um, are the ones that get selected ultimately for lines. So if you are doing an awesome job as an extra, you know, you may end up with a line at the end of the day, which is awesome. Um, so, you can really rise to the top and meet a ton of great people along the way. And those people you'll want to stay in touch with because um, they'll get other jobs, you know, and they'll remember you. In fact, you know, I have a lot of clients that will call me requesting certain people because they stood out as an awesome, you know, 
extra delivery driver, you know, scuba diver, whatever they were in the scene, you know, because they rose to the challenge. So it's really worth it to bring your game face and, um, and work hard, even if, you know, even if your total background in a scene, you will stand out. Um, the ADs pay attention and they end up going to work on other shows. And if they like you, they'll remember you. So it's, yes, I think it's, it's a great, um, it's a great idea. Okay. Uh, any recommendations for where in your home to film a self tape? Um, well, certainly somewhere quiet. Um, again, somewhere without a distracting background, you know, um, you know, I, I, like to tell actors to set aside a part of your room or your house where that is where you self tape. So it's all ready to go. It's all set up. Um, and it's kind of your go to because you'll probably be doing a lot of it guys. Um, you know, this is going to be the new normal for a while. So you're going to want to set up that special place that you go to and you can just turn these things out. Um, so, you know, if it's not another, you know, used for another purpose, um, and it can just exist as your self tape corner or whatever, I think that's the best. Um, so, you know, kind of a blank wall behind you and, um, you know, a camera ready to go with, um, you know, sound lighting, everything ready to go for you. I think that's ideal. Um, I know sometimes it's not realistic, but, um, I think it helps, especially if you're going to really do a lot of these. Um, let's see how many casting agencies clearing houses should I use if we're just starting out? Um, well, you see a lot of the same gigs, multiple member size. Um, okay. So for casting, um, kind of the name of the game is, um, if I get a job in, then it's just through, um, our casting company. It's not through another casting company. So you won't see, um, you know, you know, if we did extras on a movie, you know, it would just be our company that would be doing those extras for that particular movie. So, you know, generally speaking, um, casting directors don't kind of piggyback, um, you know, to do, you know, one commercial or whatever. It's just their, it's their job. So, um, yes, you should definitely make sure you go to open calls at all the casting companies that you're, you know, part of their system, whatever database or whatever they're using. Um, because, you know, there will be different jobs going on at different casting companies. Um, can you expand on the type of camera that works best? So, I am not a super duper technical person, <laughs> but um, I think, um, you know, there are a lot of these really great little handheld um, cameras that don't have to be 4K, um, that are inexpensive, that do a super job. And I think um, having just kind of a handheld um, camera is your best We'll, we'll get you your best um, quality video. You can, again, certainly use your smartphone or a computer camera. And I'm actually using a camera now that is um, not the one on my computer. So it didn't distort, you know, this image. So you can certainly do that too. Um, you can, you know, obviously order through Amazon. Thank God for Amazon. Um, and, you know, to get your you know, kind of process set up, but, um, you know, certainly even any one of those little, um, kind of, you know, uh, consumer, um, handheld cameras will be just fine. It is an extra step to take, you know, the SD card out of your camera and put it into your computer. Um, you know, and you may need to convert it if it's too big, that sort of thing. So there are, there may be extra steps, but I think that's your best, your best camera. Uh, let's see when you are self taping, you are self tape. Um, you still don't look at the camera, right? Or do you, um, good question. So for, again, for commercials, I say, look directly into the camera for film or TV. I say kind of look slightly off camera. Um, but there will probably be instructions with whatever project you're self submitting for on what to do. Um, but you're going to want your eye line, at least two camera are slightly off camera so we can see you. Um, you know, again, I mentioned this earlier, I have people that will send self tapes where they're literally like reading with someone this way. And, you know, you'll miss half the side of their face throughout the entire performance. Um, so you certainly don't want that because we want to see your face and, you know, what's going on with you. So, um, you know, I would say either, you know, to camera if it's a commercial and off camera if it's a scene. Um, let's see. 
to film your cell tapes use an app called yeah there's a bunch of really great apps um absolutely for um smartphone submissions um so you know definitely look into that and also for um taping your lines so you can read them back there's a lot of of you know, amazing apps that are out there now that weren't back in the day. So, um, so there's a lot of, of tools you can use at your disposal to make these even better. Um, let's see, young adult self-taping, any advice? Hmm. I'm not sure. Um, young adult taping. Well, I would say, you know, just the same as what we've gone over. Um, you know, again, you're going to want to do less is more. I find kids have so much energy um, because I have one, (laughs) have so much energy. It just bubbles out and it's just, they just fill the screen and they fill the entire room. So I say less is more, Um, you know, the, the frame, um, you know, we're we're looking right into you um, on camera. So, you know, certainly if um, you do have a lot of energy, tone it down Um, and bring some honesty, you know, um, I think, again, finding that honest thread of how you relate to the character that you're reading for is really the most important thing. Um, We truly just want to see you and your take on it. And it's got to feel real because, you know, if it doesn't feel real, we'll know it immediately. And, um, you know, and we'll stop watching. So make it real for yourself by personalizing and making these really cool choices that you go after. Um, you know, that's what's going to keep us watching and hang on your every word. So, um, you know, for I think for kids, make it real. You know, you don't have to overact. Um, we want to see you, especially for kids, because, um, you know, more times than not, you're going to be playing pretty much yourself in, uh, whatever the project is. So certainly, you know, make it real for you. Um, hi, Michelle, how you doing? Yay. Cool. Um, how do you write a screenplay? That's a good question. (laughs) Um, I wish I was an expert in that one. Um, although I, I have actually written some, um, you know, I hope to one day be able to, to talk to you about that too. Um, let's see. How about length? Um, yeah, so length, um, for monologues, keep it to one to two minutes. We're not going to watch over two minutes. It's got to be, you know, within that window. I say one minute, even better. You want to come in, you want to blow us away, and then you want to go. And you want to leave us like hanging for more, right? It's um, like in dating, you know, you you don't want to sit there for 20 minutes, <laughs> you know, in your first date, you know, you want to be like, wow, who's this person? This is really cool. Oh my gosh. You know, and you're hanging on the every word. So, um, so keep it to one to two minutes, not any more than that. If it's a really long scene that they want you to tape, then, um, then great. Um, but you certainly don't have to, um, you know, to tape for 20 minutes. Um, and they'll usually be different scenes and they never usually exceed that if it's for a film, if you're leading, you know, reading for a lead role. Um, by the way, you can go to um, melanieforchetti.com, name M-E-L-A-N-I-E-F-O-R-C-H-E-T-T-I.com. And I actually have some handouts and stuff that I'm more than happy to send you, um, calling the power pages. So you guys have the, all of this kind of on, you know, a page. So please reach out to me there and I'll be happy to send you stuff. Um, and, you know, mention you saw me on the session. Um, let's see. How do you stand out for a monologue? Um, you know, I think it goes back to making cool choices. Um, I think it's all about being interesting and, um, and pulling us in, you know, again, if you, if you challenge yourself and yeah, okay, I'm not a doctor, I'm an oncologist, I'm a, what, you know, you challenge yourself to go even further with the choices that you're making. It's going to be really interesting to us. And even if it's not, again, the choices that we were looking for in a character, um, don't worry about that, you know, um, we'll redirect you. We'll, we'll say, Hey, we need another self tape. We'll, you know, put you in the pool of callbacks if we like what we see. So, um, just make sure that you fit into the world in which you're, you know, you're being, um, cast for slate at the beginning or end of the audition. I prefer in the beginning. Um, you can also certainly do a separate take of your name, um, and then cut and then, you know, do another separate take of you doing the copy. And sometimes that's easier, um, to 
transition from, you know, your slate to the character. So um, a lot of times you're more than welcome to do that. But I would label the clip slate and then, you know, and then your actual take. Um, so I, I would actually put that in the name of the file. Um, let's see. When self-taping and they want to zoom out to full body, do you have no one to do that? What do you suggest? Oh, God bless you too. Um, so again, I would say, um, you know, for the slate, I would do a full body slate. And then I would do cut and then do a medium close up for your copy. Um, you know, if you do a full body for your whole take, we're not going to see you. And um, I don't want to want that to get lost. You know, I want to see your eyes and I want to see, you know, what's really going on with you. And it's easier as a medium close up. So I would do two takes, like a long shot for your slate and then cut and then do, you know, again, a medium you know, medium close up for your actual copy. Um, what are deciding factors for booking the role besides talent? Um, you know, that's a good question. So um, other deciding factors, I would say, um, sure, we're looking for talent, but we're also looking for a person that we, you know, want to work with. Um, we want to be able to know that when we bring you on set, you're you know, you're going to be approachable, you're going to be um, friendly, you know, um, that this is someone that we can spend like 12 hours on set with um, and have a great day. And someone that can, um, you know, not get super stressed out and, um, you know, that's going to be a team player. I think that's a, a good way to put it. Um, so, yeah, that's hard to get from a self-tape and we'll probably, you know, be in touch with you more and Skype with you and whatever in this, you know, day and age. Um, but we want to know that, um, that you're going to be there for us. So we, you know, again, you know, you're going to pitch in and you're, you know, you're okay with stress levels. And if everything goes bad, because, um, you know, projects will just go south quickly and, um, we want to know that you're okay with that. <laughs> and, um, I, you know, I have a friend that, um, one of my best friends in New York who uh, told me a story of how she she's an actress um, and she was going to be like the non-speaking role in this commercial. Um, so it started out like that. And by the end of the day, she was actually the lead role. They changed everything when she got to set and she was the lead role. She had lines that she had to memorize on set and she basically like, you know, was everything in the commercial. So, um, everything changed and she was able to, you know, to roll with it. And, um, you know, and she came out, you know, shining because she did such a great job. So, um, so I think that's what we're, we're really looking for. Um, let's see, how do you deal with actions that might be off camera and sides you're given? Cool idea. Um, yeah. So I say, try to limit your blocking as much as possible. Um, you know, we don't want, again, the technical aspect to take away from your self-submission. We want it to be, um, we want to see you for most of it. So if it's some weird, you know, thing that you have to, you know, in the script, you know, you might try to bring it in closer, you know, so that you're still on screen. You don't want to leave off camera and come back on, you know, um, that's distracting and we'll think that it's the end of the tape if you leave, you know, um, you know, being on frame. So try to keep everything right here. Um, and I say, you know, a lot of times don't worry about it. Don't worry about whatever weird actions it's having you do. Um, but really, you know, just um, focus on the character because, you know, if we like you, then we'll tell you what we want, you know, and we don't know, sometimes the director doesn't even know what they want. So, um, so I say, you know, just look at the copy itself, if you can, and keep everything on camera. Um, should you use props if it's included in the script? Um, so I like props. I think props are great. Um, if it adds to your performance, if it takes away, um, then I say no. Because again, we don't want it to be all about the phone or whatever it is. You know, if it's helping you, if you have to take a call, you know, then by all means use your phone. Um, but you don't want that prop if it's, you know, let's say it's a scene with a dog, you know, 
I'm a huge dog lover and I would love that, but um, I would not do a scene with a dog just because we would be looking at the dog. So, um, you know, so just kind of pay attention to that. And if they're little props, then by all means, you can use them. Um, but, you know, we don't want to be, you know, focused on the prop more than your delivery. Okay. Let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, you're welcome. Yay. I hope I'm helping. Uh, let's see. What if you have nothing to put on your resume? Um, I'm just starting out. I don't have any official training and have been trying to self-study given the situation. Um, so you know what? I would say um, try looking at online courses, um, online workshops. Um, you know, again, I think training is probably the easiest place to start with a resume. Um, you know, I realize this is a crazy time and, you know, all production, you know, has changed. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I would, you know, we're all going to have to kind of change to fit into this weird new normal. Um, so I think, um, you know, voiceovers is big right now. I'm casting voiceovers. Um, so, you know, the industry shifts to whatever we're given. Um, and um, right now, learning voiceovers would be a, a great thing for you to, especially if you're just starting now, um, you know, having this kind of home studio idea that we're talking about would be key because you can actually start creating your own content. And I think, um, you know, right now more than ever, you've got, you know, time on your hands. And um, if you're sitting here looking at a computer, then you have, you know, access. So I would say, you know, start creating your own content um, and start kind of working it out that way. Um, there are some amazing books, you know, um, that you can learn from as well. But for your resume, you know, you can start with the training if you can. And then um, I would I would certainly start trying to, you know, create your own stuff, um, work with other actors. Um, you know, everybody's looking and hungry to do stuff. So, um, you know, you can certainly start reading scripts with other actors, you know, that sort of thing. And when production starts picking up again, you know, I would say do extras, non-speaking roles to really start growing your resume. Um, let's see. And um, also, you know, I would say just another quick little shout out, you know, definitely check out my website. Um, I have newsletters that I'll offer tips on and I'm also writing a book. So um, I'd love to hear your ideas and what you'd like, you know, to hear more about. Um, so it's just my name, melanieforchetti.com. Sign up for the newsletter. I'll also send you some freebies, like some, you know, power pages and stuff that will help you with all of this stuff. And we'll, you know, we'll focus on a lot of the stuff that we've talked on. So, uh, da, 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 da. social media is a good idea. Um, it is a great idea. Um, and I turn to it a lot. My clients turn to it a lot. In fact, um, I did a host for PBS recently and it was all about social media guys. I mean, they like looked on all the, um, all of the actors that we brought in, they were looking at the social media and what they've done. Um, so, you know, it can really support you. So make sure that um, all your social media sites, your website, you know, kind of all your collateral material, marketing materials speak to you um, and you want it to be kind of a unified um, theme because um, this is kind of another soapbox I go off on, but you are a business, right? So um, you got to speak to what that is. And if you... Um, you know, or skewing yourself to being, you know, the young mom, or maybe the business professional, or the doctor, or you, you know, a cop, then all this kind of stuff starts morphing into what you as an actor and your product is that you're marketing. So make sure that the social media doesn't take away from, you know, you as an actor, and make sure it supports you as an actor. Um, so you know, Instagram also is big. Um, I think having, um, you know, an Instagram site is a huge deal. Uh, but a lot of my clients will check you out. <laughs> so make sure, you know, all the stuff is speaking to the same thing as you as a professional actor. Um, and I think it can really help you. Uh, do casting directors usually look for actors in their area? Yes, we do. Definitely. Um, I recently did an Amazon series called Free Meek. And it was um, shot here in Philadelphia. And 
um, we cast just the majority of the actors from Philly. Um, it was just Philly dominant. They really wanted, you know, um, that true Philadelphian accent. Um, they wanted, you know, true natives here. So um, we, I would say probably 80% of the movie was you know, with actors from here. Um, I did do some New York, Atlanta, LA, you know, we reached out all over, but primarily it was here. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it was great and turned out really great. So it was, it was super to be involved, but yeah. Um, you know, I, here in Philly, I cast people here in Philly and I also do New York too and DC kind of up and down the coast. Um, uh, yay, Meek. Uh, should I put workshops under my training on my resume? Yes, definitely. Um, absolutely. I think, you know, if you really feel that it served you well, um, definitely put uh, the name of the workshop and who you studied with. Um, for people like me who read that stuff, um, you know, I'll want to know who you've trained with. And, um, like I mentioned earlier, kind of what techniques you use, because that helps me in a session, you know, know how to talk to you better. Um, so I, I think that's really important information. So, you know, what the name of it was and, you know, who you studied with. Uh, yay. Okay, cool. Great. Yeah, definitely, guys. Um, you know, right now it's all about networking and staying close to each other and um, a support group, um, you know, especially during this time. So I would definitely say, um, you know, keep up the networking, you know, please reach out. Um, and uh, hey, Kyle, thanks for tuning in. Um, really good to see you guys on here today. And I hope that I've been able to help you. Um, I'll take a last maybe question or so. I know what we've gone on here. <laughs> so um, can we put this resume webinar? In? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, you know, again, um, it shows people that you are investing in your career. And that's what we truly want to see. We want to see someone that's really serious about this and, um, you know, that you're taking steps to further your career. So great job. Um, cool. Well, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, um, you know, again, I say, you know, if you, uh, are self-submitting, you know, kick it up a notch, hopefully some of these tips will help you. Um, but it's really coming down to self-submissions guys. So you're going to really want to nail it. And I wish you all the best. Um, again, um, I, Head of Casting, Mike Lemon Casting, which is MikeLemonCasting.com. And you can also check out my stuff at MelanieForchetti.com. And I just so appreciate you guys being here today. And please, please take care of yourself. Stay safe. And God bless you. And I hope to see you soon. Okay. Uh, I will sign off now. Bye, guys.